In the past week, the doctor who was at Michael's deathbed, Conrad Murray, has made some of the most shocking claims to date, even revealing that Michael wanted to marry the 12-year-old daughter of his good friend, Mark Lester. Here to tell their side of the story and what life was really like with Michael Jackson, please welcome Harriet and Mark Lester. Welcome to the show. Um, I'll you. start with you, Harriet. I mean, they were really shocking claims. And how did that make you feel? Uh, completely shocked. Um, like you said, um, I've never expected anything like that to happen, um, for anyone to say anything like that. So um, just a bit hurt and shocked and confused, I think. Mm. Um, it was very surprising. And uh, I mean, all of, m all of my friends and family have just all sort of been behind mm. me saying that you know, it's completely ridiculous. So nothing in your memory at all when you... Because this yeah. must have made you look back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing in your memory when you thought, oh, actually, or, no, that can't be right. Mm. Nothing has brought anything forward to, to you to think... No, I mean, I, it is obviously very difficult for to think in that way, but, I mean, I've really been forced to look back on things, and I can honestly say there wasn't anything at Not all. one moment, was just... Yeah. A really but, fantastic, supportive But some family people member. might say, but Harriet, you might not have been aware of being groomed by somebody. I mean, well, I mean, the, the actual article states that I was 12. I was actually 15, 16 at the time. Yeah. And, I mean, we're all quite... Uh, my father's race is all very sort of independent, sort of yeah. maybe a bit too um, independent strong <laughs> people. But, um, no, I can't imagine that. And also, I can't imagine... Michael would ever do that to my my father. So as did well. you feel as though he was your family? Yeah, that see, was... that's exactly it. It was a very sort of family environment. Father, yeah, exactly. So you yeah. must feel very bereft now because you've lost a family. So you must feel yeah. very bereft for that moment. E exactly, and I don't. I'm not going to let this change those because those that that was your you know, memories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not going to let that cloud those. You know, because it was one. He was a wonderful, fantastic, mm. really supportive, and genuinely like, such a lovely human being. And it really saddens me. And I mean, for Mark, it must be mm. frustrating for you because obviously he's been a close, he was a close friend of yours for so many years. And do you feel that since all of this, you spend your time now just having to defend him and... Yeah, absolutely. I'm, and I have to defend him from people who've never, ever met him. Uh, yeah, who are just, just going by media. I'm only just relying on hearsay yeah. and media uh, publications, which, you know, I knew the guy. We all knew the guy, and he was just... Uh, you knew him from when you were, what, 18, 19 yeah, years yeah. old? Mm. So, I've known for decades you knew yes. him mm. for. But this uh, Dr Conrad, who has written the book, came into Michael's life, what, 2006? Yeah. And you didn't really meet him, did you? No. So All that drug and stuff was, was very well hidden. That's what yeah. I wanted to ask yeah. you about, because obviously you were around Michael's house and, uh, uh, and Harriet was, was hanging out with Michael's kids, so that was, it was almost as if Michael had different personalities that yeah. different people saw. I don't know if he had dis different personalities, but he certainly the evidence of drug taking was, was very well hidden. Yeah. And I never, never ever witnessed anything, well, any of us. Yeah. The only thing I ever saw was a bottle of aspirin in his bathroom mm. once. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I thought he was almost advieric. Adv yeah. This natural medicines and yeah. homeopathic. I mean, do you think with Michael as well? Because the way the documentaries I've watched, I watched one recently actually. Um, my perception of it when I see him is that because of the child, well, the lack of childhood he had, really. Mm. He, if for me, he kind of stayed like a twelve-year-old, yeah. like mentally, in a way, of, of how we felt about kids. And that reminds me of a 12-year-old saying, oh, when, when she gets older, I'm going to marry her. Mm. I mean, there, there could be that he did say that, but not in the way that everybody is jumping on it. Yeah, I think he would have said it in a sort of fairy tale, kind of innocent... I mean, we knew... It's very hard for me in, in, in a short space of time to tell you, you what the, the yeah. man was like. Well, was like. he a tactile person? Yes. And was he tactile with the children? Yes, I mean... Yeah, but in an I, innocent way. Yeah, absolutely. I but mean, do you think he was asexual? Yes. Mm. So totally. if, if he was asexual, I mean, it's been documented and you've verified that he asked you to donate sperm so that he could have children. Yeah, there, there was that uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which happened. Yeah. yeah well, because there's been more. There has been documented that the, it was the belief was that you were their father, and so that comes from that um, statement, wasn't it? That, that you were asked to donate sperm. Mm. Oh, but yeah, did you ever question that? Did you ever question why you were asked to donate sperm? Well, I kind of knew where <clears throat> for the reason behind it. Obviously, I mean, I didn't want to uh, just put it on a jar on the shelf and look mm. at it. No. Uh, well, I hope not. Anyway. <laughs> um, so. Uh, it, uh, no, I, it's, it was a weird proposition, but, you know, there are stranger things out there, so, you know, I... But it never occurred it to you that, oh, really? Well, then is that what it's going, it's going to be used for? Or did well, you I guess I must it? have at the back of my mind. You must have, yeah, yeah, yeah. at some point. And yeah. you were very... You were close, especially to Paris, wasn't it? Yeah, we were very similar age. Me and my sister Olivia in mm. Paris were mm. very, very close. So have you seen them since uh, Michael's death? No, I haven't seen them. Why do you think that is? I... I don't know. Maybe the family have been quite... They've sort of... I, I have no... Honestly, I can say no idea why. I would love to have contact with them, but... Maybe they've been quite sheltered since... Um, since then, yeah. Since his death. So nobody gets to them, maybe. Yeah. Mm. But, I, I mean, I would love to. Um, however, it, you know, it's just really sad. But now maybe we're a bit older, we can you start to... You make your own choices, Yeah, maybe. that's exactly yeah. it. Now that, um, you know, we're more independent, I, I would like that. If you've enjoyed that, then why not click here for more? And don't forget to subscribe by clicking here so that you never miss out on the best Loose Women moments.